During this course, we're going to use version control to submit the assignments. Before we can talk about that, we're going to learn a little bit about the command line and duplicate the kinds of file manipulation we can do with Windows and clicking inside of the command line interface. 40 or 50 years ago, the only interface to a computer was the keyboard. If you wanted the computer to do something, you would have to type in a command and it would show you the result in a wall of text. This interface is actually still available on most computers. And in this video, we're going to just duplicate the file manipulation tasks we can do in Windows inside of this text only interface. When demonstrating all of these command line commands, I'm going to keep this regular window open on the right hand side so that we can see that all of the tasks I'm doing are just like regular file manipulation inside a window. Now I'm going to open up the terminal application on my computer. And now the window is ready for me to start typing. Once the terminal window is open, I'm already inside of a folder. If I want to know what particular folder I'm in, then I type in the PWD command, which stands for present working directory. When I type in the PWD command, it gives me this output. And this output is called a path, and it tells me the location of where I am. Paths are the terminology for specifying the location of a file or folder anywhere in my computer. Once I'm inside of a folder, I can see which files are inside this folder by doing the ls command. You can see that when I type in ls, the names of these folders are the same as the window on the right hand side. Let's talk more about paths. There are two kinds of paths, absolute paths and relative paths. An absolute path describes the exact location of a file or folder somewhere in my computer. And it does this by describing all of the parent directories of that file or folder. At the very top level, the thing that all of my other file or folders are inside of is the root directory, which is just indicated by a slash character. You can see that when I ran the pwd command, it gave me an absolute path. This means that if I start at the hard drive on my Macintosh, I should be able to get to my command test directory by clicking through all of these folders. Let's try that now. The other kind of path, relative paths, describes the location of a file or folder from my present working directory. You can see that when I do ls, it lists the folders inside of that folder, and I don't have to mention the entire path. I can continue to do ls based on the folders inside of the boat folder and I get a listing of those files inside that folder. So we said that ls is to see what files are in the present working directory folder, but I can also say ls space and then an absolute or relative path. If I want to change my present working directory, I can use the cd command. So cd stands for change directory cd space and then some path. First I'll do pwd again to show which directory I'm currently in. Now I'm going to cd into the boat directory. And if I do pwd again, it tells me that I'm in that directory. To make a new folder, I type in the make dir command and a space in the name of the folder I want to create. You can see that when I type in the make dir command, it created the folder over here in the actual window. When working with files in the command line, there are a couple of things that are going to help you. One thing to know is that files are case sensitive. So lowercase b is considered a different file from uppercase b. The other thing is that it's easier to name files without spaces. And this is because in the command line, the spaces usually tell you about the different parts of a command and not one single file name or folder name. Next, we'll create a simple plain text file from the command line. 
This is relevant for creating code files. Uh, you can't create a Word document this way, but any kind of plain text file uh, you can create from the command line. You can see that when I typed in the touch command, the file appeared over here in the window. When copying a file, you need two things, the name of the file and then the destination or name of the copy. To copy an entire folder, you need a slightly different command, cp space dash uppercase r, the name of the folder and then the name of the copy of the folder. You can see that when I look inside of the anchor folder and the new anchor folder, it has the same contents. To move a file or folder, I use the mv command. So mv, the name of the file or folder, and the destination. So now you can see that when I look inside this folder, there's the file that I moved. It's as if I had clicked and dragged it into that folder. In the command line, to rename a file, it's actually still the mv command. mv space the name of the file that you want to rename space uh, the name of the new file. In order to rename the file, I don't need the present working directory to be the one with the file in it. I can simply just type in the path. I'm using the tab key to autocomplete for the name that I want. Now you can see that the file got renamed uh, to what I typed in. It's as if I had just come and clicked to rename the file. Any of the commands that I did here that use a file or folder name can also uh, use a path instead just like I did for the mv command. To remove a file, it's rm space, the file name. Now I'm going to delete the hello text file. And you can see that it disappears from the window. To remove an entire folder, it's rm space, dash r space, the name of the folder. Now I'm going to delete the entire jib rigging folder. And you can see that it disappears from the window here. One thing to know and be careful of when running the rm command or actually any command line command is that there's no undo button. When you remove a file, it doesn't go to the trash can and there's no way to get it back. So before you hit enter on a command, just double check to see that you've typed in the correct thing. There are a couple of special ways to refer to relative paths that we should know for convenience. The first one is the parent directory, and that's just two periods. Let's start by seeing what my present working directory is. So I'm inside of the bolt folder, which is right here. If I do ls, I can see all of those folders. I can look at all of the folders of the parent directory, this one, by doing ls dot dot. There's a special way to refer to the path of your current directory, and that's just a single period. If I want to copy this hello text file from this folder into my current folder, I can just refer to my current folder as period. So I'm going to say copy. And if I put a period, that means I want to copy it into the current directory. So when I do that, uh, it copies it into the boat directory. There's one more special character, and this one refers to a specific folder in your computer, and that's the tilde character. In the command line, this is referred to as the home directory. On a Mac, 
this folder is referred to with this house icon. And this is the folder that's created for me when I create the user that I log in with. If I do ls and the tilde character, then it will show me all of the folders and files inside of this folder.